Hey guys, Romy here. So please like, comment, subscribe. This is my quick review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10, Episode 7, Rock the Boat. Because this episode, aside from, you know, something really important like Sheree talking to her kids. So I'm glad that she finally had that for her family's sake. And, but aside from that, almost everything else is a filler. So it starts off with Sheree. She's going and she has to get doors for downstairs you know because unlike most unlike a lot of people because Sheree has all these eyes on her and clearly people care if her entire house is done or not and she cares herself because she's like i can afford to do it she's gonna go and uh, get these expensive like five thousand no it's like nine thousand dollar door or doors for her basement no that was for one door jesus jesus so portia goes and meets up with her and they're going in door shopping. That was actually two minutes of them door shopping. I said, wait, what? Next, we had Candy. She went and she met up with Cynthia. And uh, Candy finally got to see Lake Bailey. You know, Cynthia's house. She's like, this place is beautiful. And you could tell it's a very open, just light um, type of house. And so it's really nice. Cynthia has a prayer wall, or I should say she has a cross wall, because she's like, look, the more the merrier. <laughs> Kenya comes over, and the conversation starts off essentially with Kenya talking about, you know, her home going for her grandmother. So it was beautiful, and that was great. Now we get to the main crux. The main crux is Kenya. Well, there was a, a two-pronged thing. It was like, Cynthia let Kenya know things things in regards to you took a, a left once you left and it happened because you know it had to do with the fact that Cynthia hasn't met your husband Cynthia was like look she loves Kenya they're close friends and she thought it was a little weird that she wasn't you know invited or or okay you, you were invited to the wedding fine but what about at least just me and the guy, Cynthia in the confessional is like, well, I was in New York. If he's in New York, I was there. I mean, you can fly. Like, what was going on? Can you just, she brushed it off like, look, do you really know I was just trying to keep things on low for the for a while? And, you know, he doesn't really put himself out there like that. But, yes, you are my friend, so you will meet him, you know, eventually. <laughs> Let's just say eventually. We won't even say soon. Let's just say eventually. And so, you know, that's all Cynthia needs. It's just like, all right. You no, know, I'm not gonna bug. I'm not gonna bug. This isn't a big enough deal to go and bug out. But uh, Sheree and Portia, they talk about, you know, also the fact that Cynthia was a little upset about one, the ladies talking about Kenya, but two, why they were talking in the first place because Ken, no one's met her husband. And again, they, uh, I'm glad that. I'm actually really glad that Kenya didn't go and overreact. She was just like, you know what? I don't have time for this. I'm actually happy. Um, and, you know, Cynthia, she's not coming from a malicious place. She's not asking for too much. So, look, I'll let it rock. But, apparently, Kenya's been so out of the loop that she hasn't been a part of the mess. And I said, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, she didn't know that there were pictures of Sheree's prison bay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cynthia and Katie were like, what? Well, if you didn't see them, and they were nice. I remember, I thought, I was like, this can't be real. I said, yep, this is just so out of pocket for this to be real. When I initially saw the pictures myself over the summer of Sheree having the wifey shirt on, and she was clearly in I said, Sheree, you're trying to mess with us. Anyway, we see again to Portia trying to, no, I, I won't say trying, she's still doing the vegan um, thing for now. I love how I said the vegan thing, the life, the food lifestyle choice. Um, but she has these matchmakers come and she wants to find a man. She's like, everyone, Cynthia's dating. Um, Kenya is married to a real man. <laughs> it's just, it's just time. So I said, no, there's nothing wrong with that. She talks about the qualities that she wants. She says she's open to interracial racial dating um obviously she wants someone attractive i almost forgot about todd you know her boyfriend her longtime boyfriend who ended up um who she ended up i guess things were moving fast and he wanted things that she didn't want or but you know we just kind of see through porsche's 
her dating life on the show. And I uh, and this is went from someone who didn't even want to go to a strip club or be associated with anything like that because she was afraid of what her husband would thought to do all the stuff that she did on the show. It's like, look at that growth. Look at that grown woman growth. But the lady said, the match weaver said they need to see her house to see what type of person she really is. And so apparently Portia has, and I forgot about this. We already knew, but Portia has a room that's like a little boy's room, a little girl's room because of the wallpaper and all of that and the setup, including a whole playhouse jungle gym in the backyard and the matchmakers had to let her know yo you did not scare off any man that comes in here like what are you doing what are you doing like it's good because they'll know from jump what you really want but this is a lot this is a lot Portia this is a lot so now oh, I hate when it does that weird lighting on my face anyway Cynthia she's apparently her and Peter they still have that property in Georgia where Peter's going to do another bar one or sports one and so he's there again they're always doing their li it's light the relationship's over it's light flirting Cynthia came dressed for uh, I don't know I'm looking at Cynthia like what where are you going again because of course you look good that's not the issue I'm just trying to figure out where were you going because <laughs> she has her heels on and all of that she's there she meets the staff and crew and they're about to be ready to go. Mind you, um, it's just the whole thing of Pierre says, oh, well, I see Will. Yeah, you and Will. How's you and Will? And she was like, um, well, we're, <laughs> what? Oh, is that a new Housewives franchise or was that Potomac? Because I just saw a commercial for something. Hold on, guys. Oh, who was that for? Oh, maybe it's them and they're just going somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. Cynthia was like, oh, that's just something casual. And, but we know Peter had his own thing or, you know, supposedly still has his own girlfriend somewhere else. I don't know if they're still together. But so he's fine. They're fine. Again, it's always that weird thing of apparently they talk a lot. And I'm like, Cynthia and these, I want to stay in touch with these exes. But okay. Anyway, Sheree's house is a celebration because her youngest daughter is going away to an HBCU. So she's super proud and surprised because she was like, her daughter's been around white people for like the majority of her life for schooling. So she's surprised that she wants to go be around some black people. And they're like, what type of surprise is that? Like, I have to be honest. I probably would have tried to go to an HBCU if... Um, like, with everything that's happened in the world, I probably will have done that versus the school I went to. I loved the school I went to, so it was no issue. But I definitely think I will have made more of an effort to try and make that situation work um, with an HBCU. But anyway, we get to um, Candy. Candy's concerned because Candy, well, actually, they take the swimming coach. Um, so Todd's, you know, biological daughter is there to... But they're taking a little ace swimming so that he can learn. And I said, good, teach them at that age. And I liked the fact that they like showed the entire process. And I was like, cool, maybe this will get some other parents to feel comfortable with having their kids. Um, well, making sure that their kids learn how to swim. Because that's an important thing. Because I have to be honest, I still don't know how to swim swim. I can be in the water. And stuff but that's pretty much it if i'm trying to swim away somewhere it's pretty tragic tragic because i'm uh i'm a sinker i'm I, i'm built like a sinker <laughs> i'm skinny but i'm a sinker so that was always part of the issue <laughs> and so but anyway we get to the actual crux of this episode which is sheree now this scene took obviously multiple minutes because it was just like what her kids weren't ready for this. You know, her daughter's friends, they went and left. Then the Sheree sits, sits all her kids down, let them know, yeah, so I need to talk to you guys about something. And then she takes them through the whole thing of, yeah, so I'm sure you guys heard about the abuse stuff between my dad and I. And I kept this secret for all these years because essentially I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed and um, I didn't want to put that out there. I didn't want you guys to think any different of him. And her youngest daughter said, 
the, her, um, her dad tried, Bob tried to talk to her about it after a soccer game and she left because she was like, really? Really you trying to do this now? Um, her oldest daughter was just like, you know, her body, I was shocked because I just never, and it's just, it's just like, wow. Cairo was pretty quiet. He was also like, he was surprised, but it's kind of those things where the her oldest star said, look, we love you. We support you. You're strong. You're beautiful. We appreciate you. Positive reinforcement. They hug. But it was definitely one of those like, oh, my God, we're doing we're, we're oh, God, we're doing we're doing this right now because this is oh, OK. Just get, they were quiet as you would as you would expect in that type of situation. But I'm glad that she finally had that conversation with them and you know going forward maybe in just regular relationship stuff maybe there'll be more um openness it's not as important candy wanted to make sure she spent some time with riley so they went to the i fly um indoor you know skydiving thing and while talking to riley riley made it very clear that she's not a big fan of this whole new her mom's working and that's great and all but you're saying, oh, you want to do stuff? Cool. You keep, unfortunately, because you're really busy canceling the stuff that you're scheduling. That's where I'm not going to get excited about you scheduling stuff. I'm going to let you rock because you're making money. And I know what you're doing is important. So I can't say anything bad about it. But I can't act like, ugh. Man, of course, Candy feels bad because it's like she's trying to provide. She's trying to build this empire. And it... It's a lot. A touring date schedule. Riley's older now. She, She's not just going to want to be up under her mom, um, you know, over the summer to go on the tour and all of that. That's not what she's trying to do. and Or, like, even on the weekends. But I'm like, you, you love your mother. Some of this is a little petty because you're used to a certain setup. Don't do this. But So then it was just like, okay, we'll, we'll let it rock. We'll figure this out. Now... Oh, Sheree's baby's going to college. We see that Cynthia, well, Will sent a driver over to her. So the driver's going to take her over to, apparently there was this, well, they're doing a boat ride. So Will's there. He's dressed very casual. Cynthia, of course, is dressed up. And Candy comes with Todd. Remember, Todd's still friends with Peter. And apparently he met with Peter last week, you know, at the time of the filming. So it's just like, I have to keep my eye on this guy. And Candy said, yeah, because this guy is known to do the reality show circuit. And I said, uh-oh, here we go. Apparently he was on Steve Harvey and he did a reality-based dating thing. And then there was another project that Candy's friend was a part of or going to be a part of. And so then when this was brought up, he had that look of, we we're really doing this? We're really doing this? And then he said, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, that was true, but the other project, it didn't happen. I thought about it and then realized that wasn't a good move. I don't think it came to fruition anything anyway, so it wasn't like it was the biggest choice at one point. But Cynthia was just like, look, we casual. This is cool. Um, we dating. Yeah, we dating. Seeing other people. Possibly seeing other people. So just trying to let it rock. Just trying to let it rock. Come on now. And so then Cynthia talks to Candy and it's just like, look, again, this is casual. Thank you for protecting me because we're real friends. I know you have my back, but maybe I'm just trying to. Well, apparently Cynthia and Will haven't had sex yet. And I said, good, good. Not yet. Anyway. And Candy's just looking at her like, well, what are you waiting for? Because what if you finally do it and you don't like it? You're not feeling it. Like, what's going on? What's up? What, what are you doing? So then Cynthia said, look, how am I supposed to know if I like it or if, you know, because she's like, she doesn't want a too short and, and free. <laughs> We're talking about, you know, the packages and whatnot. I'm just like, all right, I'm checking out this. But you get the point. They're eventually going to do it. Apparently, Cynthia... She's had someone at least kind of blow the back her black out in L.A. A guy that she didn't want to talk about. It was like, okay, we know I don't have anything, so I'm not trying to put it out there. I'm like, let's see, who does Cynthia know that's in L.A.? And then my mind started to race. I said, well, it wasn't Rob. It wasn't Leah. It was <laughs> but anyway, 
they come back together and everything seems cool. Uh, Portia goes on a blind date. It's with the white guy and um, I guess general build wise, it wasn't Portia's ideal. Like, ooh, but she let rock. The guy, he was very nice, but he's just pretty regular. So Portia had to put 20 on 10 as far as making the dates seem interesting. She did the extra laughing. She even put out there that her mom is living with her. Again, that's... She was purposely just trying to... Like, dude, mom's at home. I only have, like, 30 minutes. I only snuck out. And the guy knew. He was just like, okay, he had some drinks. He was trying to loosen her up. But she was like, you know what? You know, we're, we're good. We're done. And I said, what? What? So then... The show ends with Sheree. She's with her life coach, and she says how she actually had the conversation with her kids. And he was like, oh, that's great. But then she gets a phone call. I'm thinking, this, the call happened at this time. Really sure. I said, okay, you can't call him back, so I understand. She's talking to her prison bay, and he apologizes because apparently when he went away, he couldn't talk to her for a while. And so she felt... Like, that's why their relationship ended. And I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, and she appreciated that he told her, um, you know, that apology. She was like, that's pretty stand up. And, you know, he was trying to shoot his shot and everything. And that was great. But then when she talks to her therapist about it, and he was like, wait, you have a boyfriend? Wait, he's in jail? And she was like, she's really in love. She doesn't care what anyone says. And he said, okay, that's cool. But what happens if he doesn't come out? Because she was like, she, she, he's the love of, no, he's the love of her life. She's the love of his life. The therapist, again, says, that's great. But what happens if he doesn't come out? What happens if, you know, things don't rock? What happens if? Things are different once he's out. And so that's how the episode ends. So that's all I got. Come back next week.